Welcome to Bootstrap Businessmen, the podcast devoted to the aspiring entrepreneur on a shoestring budget. Here are your hosts, number one best-selling fitness author, Dale L. Roberts, and the Midwest's best, Kevin S. Allen. All right, here we go. We're into the after show. Your boy, yeah. Kevin S. Allen and me, Dale L. Roberts. We're jumping on here. Uh, we just had two just quality interviews uh, that were done back to back. And Kevin and I, we just get to jib jabbing and we forget to press record. So we have some just excellent conversations. And we were just reflecting on, you know, uh, the two of us really like to look back and see some of our successes and maybe some of our fault, small setbacks. It's easy to see the setbacks, but sure. it's it's hard to remember what all we accomplished. And, you know, you think back when we first started doing this on February 3rd, I believe the date was. Yeah. Um, you know, on February 3rd, we launched on blog talk radio and we had so many issues with, with calling in. We had a script that we ran on. Um, it was, it was a bit rigid. Do you remember that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For the first, uh, man, I, I want to say like seven or eight episodes. Yeah. It was just really like da, 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 robotic almost. It, it, it was, you know, and, and yeah. not that there's not any good content in it, but unfortunately, I think a lot of people didn't get to, to hear our personalities and how you and I speak. And I really wanted it to be bootstrap businessmen needed to be like you and me talking. You know, we're, we're friends. We're the best of friends. And I think yeah. one of the things like I said is I wanted bootstrap businessmen to I wanted people to see what two bootstrap businessmen have done to start their own businesses, become successful. And that's. It was a regular conversation with you and you and me, and I just remember it was an epiphany. Yeah. It hit over my head. I swear we're on the same brainwave because I like a kind of I was like, dude, let's do a podcast and share this information with people. And we really didn't think about you know an end result. We just thought about the people that we wanted to affect along the way, and that's something Absolutely. that you know it's. I think that we're definitely on the right track, and we're bringing in some just quality guests. And you know, Kyle Stanley and Dewan Bainey were the ones we just recorded. So uh, I'm going to leave those videos up, Kyle. We'll be able to hear on the podcast this coming Sunday. Uh, if you're actually listening to this particular one, this is not going to be aired till next Wednesday. D1 is going to be uh, postponed till the very end of the month. So we're going to leave the video up for right now. It may not be on the podcast platform just yet because D1 has got nuggets of wisdom. I'm telling you this right now. Oh, man. Watch that video over yeah. and again if you want to learn something because – he had some 411, dude. I mean, stuff that man, my freaking hair on my arm stand up. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm just like, and you know, it's funny. I saw something a little bit different from D1 this time, man. He was he was super vulnerable. He was yeah. so vulnerable. And he he was like, I I, you know, few key words, transparent, honest, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, there was some, you know, a certain pause about him. You could see some personal reflection that he was able to kind of say, okay, am I ready to say this? Can I, can I, you know, express this? And he did, you know, being yeah. the articulate guy he is. Yeah. You know, and, and that was one of the parts, man, I really enjoyed just listening to him. I didn't even have to ask any questions because he already was, he was driving the answers already. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, just seeing that authentic authenticity come out, you know, is, is a beautiful thing in anybody. And that was a whole thing that you and I started talking about was like, look, if we can help that guy that's sitting on the couch thinking he's got an idea, but he doesn't know how to do it. That's the whole purpose. And then listening to him tonight, he finally, it's like, he realized that like, you know, it, it's just about being me. Mm -hmm. I love people. And I'm going to let the world see. I'm going to let the world see me. And you're right, man. It was That's being vulnerable because you're putting yourself out there, right? You're putting yourself out there in a lot of ways. Um, emotional mm -hmm. because not, you're putting your, your love and your heart, your soul into your business. And there's a possibility that it could be rejected. But you have to be okay with that and still just be yourself. And... Man, I tell you what, uh, hopefully he gets to the point where he's doing some public speaking um, because I feel he, he's got a message and he could touch a lot of people. I don't know if you felt that way tonight, but I mean, I was sitting here going, this guy needs to be on a stage. Yeah, it, it was something that I discovered, and I, you know, just before we connected here, it was some of the content that we missed out on was, you know, I saw 
Dewan some time back uh, when he was interviewed by Jason Brock on his channel. If anybody goes over to YouTube.com, you look up Jason Brock, last name spelled B-R-A-C-H-T, go to Jason's uh, interview with Dewan Bainey and uh, listen in on that. That was a real turning point for me. And it was the first exposure I had had with him. I never heard him. I was like, literally what crossed my mind. And this is, you know, me saying exactly how I felt. I was like, who the fuck is this? You know, I'm, <laughs> I literally was like, you know, who the fuck is this? But by the yeah. time that his interview was done, I was just like, why haven't I seen this guy? You know, yeah. I, I almost all of a sudden shifted my thought of, you know, of you know pessimism to optimism to where I was almost like, a, oh, my gosh, why have I missed out on this guy? What rock have I been hiding out underneath? And I'm saying this right now, and I've said it on a few people, you know, uh, I, I really believe in my heart of hearts. Dewan Bainey is has got big things lined up for him in his life. And it's just because of the fact that he has such a large heart and a need to serve others. And a lot of people, it's so funny. I, I, is this, this is the, something that bothers me that I hear mm -hmm. some people get so jaded. They're like, what's the world coming to? You know, there are so many terrible people out there. I say horse crap. You're, you're spending too much time, first of all, watching, you know, the news, news or yes. paying attention to that stuff. You know, the sensationalized violence. Yeah, violence is in the world everywhere. You know, there are some bad people out there. But I'm going to tell you, there's more good people out there than you know. There's far, oh, yeah. far more good yeah. people out there than there are bad people. And, you know, there are d out there. And there are, mm -hmm. you know, people that really have great intentions. And those are the people which you need to be paying attention to. You need to turn off your television. You need to start paying attention to what they're doing, find out what's making them successful because there's no ulterior, ulterior motive for, uh, for d -Lon. There's no, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to trick them into, you know, getting their money. Ah, ha, ha. No, he's 100% real. And here's the thing. Like I said, this guy has given me advice, tips, suggestions, comments, and interacted me in ways that have molded me and helped me become a successful person in, in my particular realm of self-publishing. And that right there, that's yeah. awesome. He didn't pay, I didn't pay a dime. I'm telling you, I didn't, I, I don't even know his books. I don't know what books he's putting out because he never really reveals what it is. And quite frankly, until he otherwise says, Dale, you should check out my book. I'm, I'm not going to really, you know, look it up. If no. there's a book though that comes out by Dewan Bainey, I'm the first in line to get it. I, well, that, yeah, that's what he was saying. You know, he's he's going to put a few out under his name. Mm -hmm. But up until this point, everything, you wouldn't really know who he is because it was all pen names or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just the company, right? It wasn't Dewan. Now yeah. he's put, he's taken himself, he's got his businesses, which by the way, I didn't really count how many, but I, I know there's more than four um, from the way that he was talking. I was just like, wow. But Mm -hmm. So he's taking his businesses. He's not putting them on the back burner, but he's stepping in front of them. Yeah. And dude, I'll tell you what, when somebody truly does that and puts their heart into it, those businesses will explode exponentially because now people know him and know what he's attached to. You know what I mean? So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It makes complete sense. And it was funny. You and I had interviewed Dave Koziel some time ago when we were still on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, and Dave is a, just a prime example of, of that success. And, you know, he kind of attested to the fact that there, there was one regret that he had. He said, you know, I really wish I had developed a brand just like you, Dale, where, you know, you pretty much put your name out there and you started building it. And uh, that, that meant a lot to me that he said that yeah. but, uh, it, it was kind of from the standpoint that where he wished that he put it out. And it's so funny because now that Dave is doing so well and the funny thing is he's kind of moved past from being this self-publishing guru to now he's really starting to establish himself on the social media as well as he's looking into affiliate marketing. And the funny thing is he's already got an audience that's just they're on on it and I love it. Uh, I'm going to go back to a phrase, you know, my boy Jobber said, and I think I've said it on previous posts as well. You know, Dave gets a lot of haters. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. They, they'd be drinking some haterade over there. I, you know, you look at it, there was like a video he posted up like recently. I watched it within an hour of it being put up. I sat down and I watched it and he's talking about how his income went from five figures down to four figures per month. And he discussed why. And he was very, you know, honest and such. He got like 18 likes and nine dislikes. And then wow. there was four comments, not including mine, four comments. And of those four comments, three of them were hateful. They were just like deceiving, like, 
how dare you? And so, yeah, you know, Jobber wow, said man. to me, he's like, you know, it's, it's like in video games. You know you're going the right direction when all the bad guys start popping out. Well, yeah, you knew that you were moving in the right direction when you started getting that guy going through trolling and uh, leaving bad reviews for you. Oh, good lord. Yes, yes, that yeah. that, that clown. And, you know, the funny thing is actually I covered it on a, uh, a video on self-publishing with Dale Roberts, uh, Dale L. Roberts over on my YouTube channel. And and I got some uh, – one of my other buddies, uh, Nicola. Nicola actually was – is another person that started self-publishing the same time as me, Dave – uh, Chase, uh, a number of us that actually were kind of like in a small knit group of people that were kind of in all these groups and would interact. And uh, but yeah, Nick Nicola was just like, oh gosh, and it doesn't kill you these one star reviews. The ones that usually kill us are even like the ones where like, I love this book, one star, and you're like, did you click it wrong? What's wrong with you, you idiot? <laughs> Did you double click back out or what? What, 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 what happened? Or these these vague people that were like, you know, two stars. Great good book you're like but don't bother reviewing it. if you're not gonna write something <laughs> they probably they probably didn't even read it they just looked at the title oh good book yeah we got good good book two stars kind of like that's not a good book two stars is like this is below average that's that's good book yes. is three stars all right maybe we need to set up like a system i'm gonna put out a book on how you review how to review and not be a dipshit there you go. <laughs> Five stars means perfect. Perfect. All right. Listen, guys. Listen, anybody that's reviewing my books, if you give me a five star, you're calling it perfect. Okay. Right. All I have to say is thank you. I am super flattered when you give me a five star. If you give me a four star, that means this is pretty, pretty darn good. That right there, I feel like it's par for course. I'm pretty happy about what I put out. I feel like I put in, you know, pretty darn sure. good books. Three yep. star means... Yeah, that was good. It was okay. Could use a little something else, but yeah. And then two stars, kind of like nah, it's a little below average. I've seen better. And then one star is like, why did I waste my time? <laughs> one star, good book. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'm gonna get a one stars, and you know, I've had my fair share of one stars. There's some that just confuse the hell out of me. Like I said, I got one of them, like two stars. This was a really good book. I enjoy it, and I read it much. And I'm like. I even comment. I never comment to the things to to any of the reviews, and I've been reconsidering that here lately. And I, and I'll I'll explain here in just a second, so that way you're not thinking I'm going to be playing with the trolls. Um, but in any event, you know, I commented this person who put the two star. I'm like, I'm kind of confused. You your review says you really liked it, but you gave it a two star. I I was like, can you explain a little bit? And they never got back to me. I don't think they probably had any kind of alert set on. It's not like anybody's going to go back and double check their reviews. But, right. um, you know, something I noticed Mike Matthews does, uh, Michael Matthews is, is an insanely, an insanely successful uh, self-published author in the fitness business and somebody that I, I I aspire to. I really like Mike Matthews, and he's such, such an, an intelligent individual. His YouTube channel is just really good. In fact, some of the information he gives – uh yeah it's like top level nerd information sorry mike it, <laughs> he, he goes he goes into the science of it me i'm just kind of like you move you burn fat eat food that's 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 me that's how my fitness is you know because the thing is i used to do the in-depth analysis you know play by play and the scientific information and yes i still do provide great uh, citations and resources and such throughout my books. And I make sure that I let people know that, you know, this is not just me spouting out information that I supposedly like, studies say, and I don't say what study it was or cite it for that matter, you know, but in the same instance, I remember when I started out as a personal trainer, I, I started out with a bang. I mean, I did really good as a personal trainer, but this is where I ran into a brick wall is because I started kind of getting a swelled head. And so I started going, well, today we're going to work out your latissimus dorsi. Well, you know, working on your biceps brachii as a secondary muscle. And people are just like, I just want to <laughs> come in and lose weight. Why am I going to latissimus? What is that? Is that Latin? And that they're, Sounds like a dance move. Right. You know, and that, that's the thing. So, yeah, but Mike does really good. And obviously uh, he's speaking to his audience because he's got a clear, clearly tons of subscribers and he sells tons of great books at a, at a premium price point compared to the others inside the fitness industry. So, yeah, Mike, Mike is fantastic. But, you know, uh, you know all, all that to say that, you know, I'm just droning on and bloviating and such. <laughs> So, nice. One of my favorite words I learned that bloviating uh, from from my good buddy Wild Bill. Wild Bill always just like 
hey, buddy, you're bloviating, man. I'm like, bloviating? I'm like, you know, yeah, you know, pretty much bloviating means just to go on and on, just to hear yourself speak. <laughs> no, dude, that's fine. But, no, back to uh, our guests and stuff the other night, man. Two very honest um, and very ethical entrepreneurs that we talked to tonight. Yeah. You know, um, they, they have, they truly have their, their customer in mind. They really do. Yeah. The, the there's a, there's, there's a love, right. Mm -hmm. For people, not just what they're doing, but just for people in general. So they want to come from a place of help, man. It's the same thing. It, it, when people get to know you, right. They feel the same way, right. It's the same way. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You put a lot of, uh, yourself, into your brand, into your books, because you care about the end result for the person. Yeah. You know, yes, number one sell, bestseller, international bestseller, and, and daily sales and monthly sales. I mean, those are all important aspects to you, right? Because that's how you make a living. But if you weren't helping somebody, I don't think that you would still do the same content that you're doing, would you? No, no, I, I really mm -hmm. didn't. And that's, you know, it was funny before this whole breaking point, uh, when it came around, uh, I think it was December. I, I just, you know, it was actually closer to November when Jason got with me and I just, I just, I just threw my hands up. I was just like, man, I just don't know if I can last in this any much longer. I was like, I don't know if I can keep on doing the workout thing because I didn't know that I was reaching anybody. Yeah. I was getting hundreds, uh, thousands of downloads but I wasn't hearing any kind of results. And he was just like, look, man, this is a slow burn. You got to stick to it. You got to be very consistent. You have to keep with it. He's like, trust me, people are, are consuming your content. They're getting results. You just haven't heard from them yet. And I think it was actually, and I, hopefully I can safely just, you know, uh, you know, mention that, well, actually I probably shouldn't. I haven't had permission, but uh, there was somebody that actually had picked up the 90 day home workout plan. And when he shared results with me, it moved me, man. I mean, it yeah. really, it got me choked up and I was just like, holy crap, I really am doing something. And it really gave me faith. And it wasn't until you came along in January where it was just like, you kind of like, well, you know, let's get this bestseller. I was like, no, I don't know. And you were like, why not? I, I was kind of like, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, because I don't like, I'd never done it before. You're like, come on, let's go. What do we need to do? And I, I was just kind of like, Damn, you're pushy. Fuck. <laughs> so I, I just, truthfully speaking, I just like literally, it was one of those cases that I just, I started just acquiescing to you where I was just like, fuck it. I'll go ahead and do it. So that way Kevin gets off my back. And <laughs> the funny thing is, son of a bitch that you get me some, some fucking results. And, and uh, so yeah, that's the funny thing is actually you and I, we get to share that story about the secrets of a number one bestseller in 30 days. We get to share that on Juliet Clark's show, one of our, our previous guests. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's in July, right? That'll be uh, July 27th, I think. And uh, I'll make sure to promote that on our Facebook page. So if anybody actually goes and follows us on our Facebook page, uh, that's Bootstrap Businessman. You go on over there and follow that. I'll, I'll definitely post something up there. And uh, <laughs> eventually we're going to get it to the point where we're going to actually start putting some promo uh, trailers. He and I were talking about this uh, on our YouTube channel. So you guys can start following that. You won't see that on the <laughs> podcast. Uh, the podcast will not have um, will not have the uh, promo trailers. So. so I want to take a step back because I really want to clarify what you just said. Okay. About so, trailers? No, 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 no. About the me. About, about being pushy. You? <laughs> yeah. No, you weren't pushy. No, yeah. the thing is you were okay. saying you were you were hitting pain points on me for me. I was I was like, let's get behind this. What do we gotta do? That that was all that I said. I think that was yeah. really the only thing I said was it was it was a it was a messaging like it, the funny thing is we never really talked about it via phone. It was like a lot of messaging back and forth. Yeah. But the thing is, is, you know, not many people communicate with me that way. You know, not many people can communicate consistently like you and I probably communicate. You're probably second to Kelly, like at this point, because Kelly oh, wow. I'm around all, all day long. Well, in, in, in Izzy, but that, yeah. that's a, that's a pet. But I mean, really, honestly, I talked to you more than anybody else. And that was the thing is you you were like, it wasn't like you were coming on strong per se, but it was like, I was getting messages and I had to kind of answer for that. I couldn't just simply go, well, I've never done a bestseller before. I couldn't just simply go, well, you know, I don't have the time because I knew that you would go bullshit. 
you've got the time, we're going to do it. And so before I could, there was, this is funny. I do this all the time. And hopefully anybody's listening to this. Um, I hope you relate to this. You ever just start typing up a message and you just, you go unfiltered. You just type, 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 type. And you just, you pause before you click that send or you press enter on your Facebook messenger and you stop and you go, should I be sending this? And that's what I was doing with you sometimes where I'd be like, I would try to make time as an excuse and I would stop and I go, is he going to accept this? I was like, I don't think he's going to accept this. And so I would literally go control all delete. And then I would go back. Okay. We got to do this. And so it was like, you know, I didn't feel like I was pressured into it, but I knew that I couldn't give you some cockamamie excuse. And that's one of the really good things about having an excellent inner circle. And you got somebody that can, you know, you can't give some bullshit excuse, you know? Right. So say for instance, you're trying to lose weight, get yourself aligned with somebody that's not going to take your bullshit excuse. You yeah. know, they, they, now I'm not saying they're going to browbeat you and beat the fuck out of you because you're not staying on track. Now that's not the kind of thing, unless you're into that, you know, uh, but you know, you need to find that person that is going to hold you accountable and not just directly accountable, but almost like an indirect type thing. And that's where you kind of came in where it was like, I felt like if I gave you an excuse, you ultimately wouldn't accept it. Even if you were nice enough that you go, Oh, okay, well that's fine. And you would move on. You know, I still in the back of my mind was like, Hmm, I was like, he's not going to accept these excuses. So, and thank God that I felt that way. Even if you weren't going to react that way, because oh, I wouldn't I have, you know, I, I wouldn't have the success that I had because you, oh. you were like, that's why I say <laughs> like, you know, you, you're very humble and you go, well, you know, you did the best seller. Well, there, there's always that cheerleader that that is in the background that really is responsible for getting the team, you know, to make goals and, you know, and to to make points and, you know, to get touchdowns. And you were there to kind of do that. And the funny thing is you even somebody's got to be a manager, right? <laughs> yeah. And that, that's the thing is, you know, you, you were able to kind of even throw in some ideas. And the funny thing is now that you're kind of you've got your hat in the self-publishing ring. You're learning some other techniques that I'm picking up from you. Like. You're getting books translated. What the hell? Uh, I've been trying to get my damn books. Like, seriously, like, I, I, in fact, you know what? We're, we're on this. We're doing this live, folks. I'm going to go on here. Hang on. We're, let's, let's go into screen share. What do you say? Well, I'll tell you what. Okay. I, uh, on Babel Cube. Yeah. I, I just spent, um, I think it was maybe like two hours one night, just going through and looking at the translators, the, the work that they've done. Yeah. Right. Um, and when I found Mariano, Mariano, I think that's how you say it. Um, she had done a couple books that were in the business realm mm -hmm. about success. So I was like, hey, we got a couple books that we can send over her way. Kyle Stanley sent me a friend request. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, ultimately, dude, you know, back to I want I want to finish the story up and stuff. It was, it was just so funny. I didn't do anything but just just helped you get your word out. You know what I mean? That was it. I called on a few favors. You know what I mean? Um, but that was it, man. You had the work. It was, it was great. I've still got it. I'm about halfway through. You know what I mean? I go back um, when I'm here at home and I can't make it to the gym. Again, there's no excuse, right? So I'll jump into the ultimate home workout plan. So... Yeah, you've got the content. Everything was there, dude. It, you did it. Um, we just we just got behind it, man. That was it. What, what was the name on the uh, person that you? Uh, uh, give me a second. Mariano. M oh, okay. I'm applying to a Juliana Damia right now. So Juliana, please, please. I applied to her. Really? Okay. <laughs> well, that doesn't bode well for me. <laughs> I, well, I, I did yeah. I, a keyword fitness whenever I pull it up. So she actually has inside her description that she's done some kind of fitness or something. Yeah, so see, that might work out. Um, I, that's what I've been do, applying to. But apparently being a number one bestseller doesn't mean jack to a translator. So uh, Mariano Saab, M-A-R-I-A-N-O-S-A-A-B. Well, Mariano, hit me up. I, I'm your boy. I'm your boy. Yeah, seriously. We, we are going to do some great business together. And speaking of doing business together, dude. Uh, let's see here. Next week's guest. Who do, who do we have on for next week, my man? Next week? Yeah. We got um, somebody on. I, I know we do. And it's, it's so funny. Yeah. I'm like at a loss right now. Let me go into calendar. Melina Shaw. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. We had to rebook Molina. Oh, my Lord. That, this is going to singe people's eyebrows. They missed out on Molina. Unfortunately, it was just a little bit of a communication snafu on everybody's part. So yeah. she is super excited. I'm going to tell you that if you want to get your, your business to the next level, networking is the way to go. And this woman, there's a good reason why she owns a business called Networking 360. Because mm. she is a pro at this. I'm telling you, networking is going to explode you to the next level. And that's also one of the things that a bootstrap entrepreneur needs to be aware of is if you don't have much money, then you always have a personality that you can go out and connect with other people. Because when you can make those connections, you could literally be able to exchange things quid pro quo. So, you know, exchange one thing for another. It doesn't always have to be reciprocal. You know, if you want to, you know, provide value to somebody and not have anything in exchange, that's great. That's excellent. But for the most part, if you go out networking, chances are you can probably really connect with some people. Absolutely. There's uh, actually a story of a guy Oh gosh, man, it's probably been, uh, let's see, about 12 years ago, right? Yeah. Okay, so he didn't have a lot of money. He was working just a normal job, didn't have a lot of money. What was that? This is my cat. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, hurry up, Dad. She was, she was uh, she's doing cardio. She goes around, like, she sounds like a motorcycle. Oh, Oh really? Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean it. Yeah, she like no. it's her cardio routine. We call it her cardio. She'll run back and around the house. It's like a racetrack for her. That's awesome. Cats okay. are so cool, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry about the Izzy. Just, Kelly's over, coming out here trying to distract her back over. Um, that's all right. Oh, Shoot, people are probably like, "Oh, Kitty, we need to watch. Yeah. We don't want to watch these ball fucks anymore." <laughs> you, need to, you, need to, you need to put her on camera, right? There you go. Oh yeah, yeah, get some cute cat videos. So, uh, so uh, continue. We're telling these stories. Well, it ties into the networking, right? So yeah. he had a little bit of money. And when I say a little bit, uh, maybe a hundred dollars. Okay. So he went to this metal fabricating shop. Okay. Talked to the guys, talked to the guys. They turned him down, turned him down. Well, he kept going back, kept going back, had plans, you know, and the, one guy's like, fine, I've got some scrap. I'll build what you need. Right. So they built this little thing for him. So now he's got to get his product out. He's like, shit, I don't have any money. Everything I've got goes into my bills, take care of my family, right? So I don't have any extra money. Mm -hmm. So he starts walking or riding his bike, either way, one or the other, to all the pizza places in the local town. And then he started riding to other nearby towns on his bike. Or if he could get a ride from somebody, he would do it because he mm -hmm. couldn't afford to pay a cab. Right. Um, and one vehicle family. So if he was home, his wife was at work. So vehicles, you know what I mean? Yep. Okay. So anyway, he did this. He got his first order. Uh, I think it was after the second month of networking, hustling his ass off. He would go in, demonstrate the products, show them how it worked, you know, let them keep it for a few days and try it out, you know, just to make sure it worked, you know. And so, and then pretty soon he got got his first order. Well, now I think these are in. I think it's Domino's has them in every one of their stops. It's a little, looks like a little prong, right? But it's set up so when they uh, empty their pizza sauce out of their bags, mm -hmm. it slides down and it gets every bit of the sauce out of the bag. So it's reducing waste mm. for them. So. Long story short, the networking part of that, if he would have given up and not not had the will to go talk to everybody, like he talked to people on the street about this thing because of what he wanted to do was have them tell maybe they knew somebody, right? They knew somebody that knew had a pizza place. So this is how he did it. just networking all the time. Chamber meetings. He would set, he set up a display one time at a grocery store, just kind of showing people as he was coming in and out. Right. This yeah. guy's not, this guy's not me. This is not me. It is actually somebody I know. So that's tremendous. And you know, it's, yeah. that's something that, you know, that's awesome. He, he, he just, this, he found a solution to a very, very real problem, which is, you know, wastefulness. And I, you know, I think probably Kelly probably shakes her head anytime I'm on a tube of toothpaste and I literally I'll take it over the crease of a freaking corner on the bathroom. And I go Whoop! and I just I squeeze that thing all the way up to the top. And, you know, the funny thing is that guy just created a great solution for everybody. And that's yeah, that's amazing. And sometimes it's some it's the simplest things that will um, that will really open up people's, you know, 
ability to create a new lifestyle for themselves. And, you know, it's always funny. Some people are like, oh, I had that idea. Oh, I had this idea. Or you're Al Gore and you say, I invented the internet. And right. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't act on it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the thing, man. You know, you got to act on it, man. Don't be sitting on your ass. And here's the thing is I always love this one. This one gets me and it's, I've got an idea and I, I wish I need to find that Mark Cuban interview where he talks about this, this whole, just, you know, I have an idea, but I, I don't want to share it with anybody because, you know, they might steal it. And I, I just, that word, that part right there, freaking kills me man it, it just yeah. slays me okay it's gonna serve a lot of good right up in your head you know you need to act now and take run the risk of having something stolen than having it pretty much reinvented by somebody else that's probably sure. one of the worst things that can happen to you well that's um, what Dewan said you know you're actually kind of being selfish if you don't share yeah exactly you know uh, run the risk of somebody stealing it you know because here's the thing is no one can reinvent you and that's right. the thing is you can you can invent some kind of a product and you're like, oh, well, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Well, guess what? It's a scary thing to cross the street, but a lot of people do it every day. You know, right. um, right. you know you're going right. to run the risk of getting run over by a car. Well, sure. yeah, you know, just get out there. And, you know, it was something I covered in um, – it's uh, going to be launched, I think, Thursday or Friday. I talk about one of the fears that someone had shared with me in a comment on um, reviews. You know, of course – Picking up, you know, some legitimate reviews, you, you contact Amazon reviewers and you essentially, you know, provide them with, like, say, a compliment or a PDF copy. And, you know, they right. asked a very legitimate question. They said, aren't you afraid of them stealing it? And uh, I'm like, no, not really, because if somebody wants to steal my stuff, they're just going to steal it. It's going to yeah. happen. And, you know, there are safeguards you can put into place. And I cover that in the video. Um, but for the most part, you're never 100% safe from that. There's always going to be somebody scheming out there to try to steal from you. But here's the thing is, you are uniquely you. And you cannot fabricate someone like a Kevin. You can't fabricate a Dale. You can't fabricate a Dewan. Thank God. You know, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's keep going Kevin S in the world. <laughs> We're uh, good. <laughs> yeah. It, so, But, you know, in any event, you know, that's, that's the thing. So, you know, you're not going to go out there and invent – you know, the next Uber. Okay. Uber's already been done. Maybe you right. can build on something or a solution that can make Uber better or something that's the same kind of Uber model that's going to do it. You know, uh, you, you're not going to be able to do the, the next electric car, you know, but maybe you can figure out a solution that could make the electric car better. But here's the thing is no one will ever know if you're too busy, scared to entrust somebody and really develop this idea and, and bring it to fruition. So, you know, anytime someone says to me, oh, I came up with that idea. Um, okay, if I ever give you this look where I go, oh, hmm. you know what that means, Kevin? You're full of shit. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, either, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm either thinking you're full of shit or you're you're a pussy. Don't, <laughs> don't be a damn pussy. Don't be scared. And if this, this chafes anybody by me saying it, good. Good. Troll, troll on me. Get chafed. You know, <laughs> uh, I, this is my call to action. Don't yeah. be a damn spineless piece of garbage because you're sitting there sitting on this idea that you're like afraid someone's going to steal it. Ooh, someone's going to steal my. Someone's going to take my toy for me. That's mine. It's mine. Yeah. You know, don't be so – share your toy with the rest of the world. Share this, this idea. Find somebody that is trustworthy and trust me. There are a lot of very trustworthy people. Sure. You know, you're not going to find them in back alleys or in bars <laughs> for crying out loud. You no, know? you got to look at it a little different. You know, people got to find their inner Elon Musk. Yes, that's a good person to point out. You know, uh, did you, I just read an article, and these have been out for uh, almost two years. And I honestly just read about it today. He's got the battery cells mm -hmm. that you mount on the wall in your house. Yep. And it can power, what is it? Basically, that takes place... Uh, you can cut the cord from the electric companies and stuff. Yep, thirty five hundred bucks. It's it's been out it's been out for a while now, and I don't know what the big yeah. holdup is. I, I I you know it's it's amazing. Elon Musk is really just breaking some. Th this is a guy that is just he is truly changing. Oh man, yeah. I, I'll tell you, man. If you can even just you know make a tenth of a difference of what Elon Musk has done within his short lifespan so far, uh, you, you. Well, and here's the thing. 
Yeah, and here's the thing we're worried about being sharing um, or worried about if somebody's going to steal your idea. He took his patents and opened them to everybody mm -hmm. because he believes in the change, right? Mm -hmm. So what if we all believe in the change? How differently would we all act to one another? You know what I mean? Not even just sharing business ideas, but how, would, how in the hell would you interact with somebody at the store if everybody believed in that change, that you could change the world? You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think there would be yeah. a lot less guarded people out there. And it reminds me yeah. of growing up in our old town of Attica, man. Uh, and do you remember being in Attica? You know, something that we can, you know, we can both laugh about. But, <laughs> dude, like you didn't just pass people and turn your head down. You didn't no. pass people and not expect to say, hi, how are you doing? Or good morning. It was yeah. always an interaction of some sort, even if you didn't know that person from town, because yep. they knew who you were. That's the funny thing. Uh, everybody knew everybody. It was like, you know, there's Tish Johnson's grandson. You know, they knew automatically that who I was. So yeah. it was always like, you know, but it was it was a friendly interaction. I didn't feel like I was obligated. It was like, you know, oh, you see no. a farmer going by on a tractor. He's waving at you. He has no, you know, hidden agenda. He's waving at you. Just saying how to do. Yeah. I imagine, you know, if we start to get it to where we can become more of a sharing type society that, you know, we'll do that. But, you know, sometimes some people go, well, you know, sharing's all well and good, but it's not going to pay the bills. Well, you know, okay, you got to draw a line sometimes, but in the same instance, you know, that's another conversation for another day, you know, because obviously sure. I can sit here and give out all of my books for free, but is that going to pay my bills? Probably not. The thing is, is knowing that you have something valuable, you bring something valuable to the table and know that, you know, you need to be compensated for that time and that for that energy. So that's that's something we covered in the interview with Dewan, which just, oh, good Lord. My gosh. Yeah. Don't, don't miss out on that one. I would could easily have Dewan probably for, you know, 12 months straight here and, and we wouldn't run out of content. We filled yeah. an hour like it was nothing. I think in. I've said this before. I think Michelle probably and Clay were, were, were two really good ones. Uh, we filled the hour like it was nothing. And it was like, I'm looking at the time and I'm like, holy crap, it's already been an hour. Yeah, it felt like 10 minutes, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah if, if my brother was watching it, guess what? He probably would have tuned out 55 minutes ago. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to get that dig in there because I think yes. Walt just happens to be paying attention. So, yeah. Walt, uh, what's, what's his alter ego? Uh, yeah. His, his, his alter ego is uh, when we used to call him in the band, we used to call him Dick Face. <laughs> 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 nice. Listen, folks, listen, it's all lighthearted Jess, and he usually laughed at yes. that. It, it wasn't yes. an endearing name and not one that he embraced, but uh, he, he it, that's I, sh I should probably shut up now. <laughs> it, but it kind of stuck, right? No, is that what you're trying to say? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so this is the thing we were in a band together and we were in a band for a number of years together and, you know, we we're like brothers, you know, and, but the thing is, anytime we got together with the band, it was like 99% of the time we were able to conduct ourselves very professionally. We always knew that it was, you know, our ultimate outcome was to make music and, and uh, go out there and just rock people's faces off. That was our thing. You know, we'd come out there and, uh, but you know, any event he, he's, you know, over the years has become a little bit more, you know, cynical and, Everybody was dick face. It was always like, hey, what's up, dick face? He would call people dick face. So we just started like just calling him dick face. It wasn't like I would go over and say, you know, you be like, hey, how's it going, dick face? No, that was Walt's thing. So we would just call Walt dick face, you know, because it was what he was calling people that on a regular pay basis. How does this have anything to do with bootstrap business? And who cares? It's, it's a who rabbit cares? trail. Hopefully you're laughing your ass off and thinking about your own <laughs> cynical brother or sister who goes around calling people a specific name. You know, hey, what's up, shit bird? You're like, you know, oh, hey, how, that person, hey, shit bird. You call everybody shit bird, don't you? You're a shit bird. So, yeah, Walt ended up becoming dick face because he just called people dick face. I don't know. You're going to have to ask him why he did it. We just, after a while, was just like, yeah, you know, they'd be like, so uh, what's dick face up to? I'd be like, I, I don't know. Let me give him a buzz. Hey, what's going on, dick face? Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's hilarious, man. <laughs> Too funny, too funny. Uh, to get us back on track here. Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, it's, we, we could talk about Walt, but unfortunately, there are some stuff that's developing, and we just got to, yeah. you know. We'll we'll talk later about that in a later yeah, episode. Exactly, exactly. So, in any event, um, so gosh, uh, you did the translating for through through Babel Cube. I I personally think it should be 
pronounce Babel Cube, but they, it's Babel Cube, and I'll just accept it. So what are some of the other things, man? We were talking about ACX last week, and it sounds to me, are we three publications deep with Bootstrap Businessmen now in an uh, audiobook? We are three. We're just waiting. Um, so the last one is complete. Soul Food is complete. We're just waiting for them to do the sound quality. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So it's just yeah. waiting on that a final approval from ACX. So at this point, we're yeah, generating awesome. income through, let's see here, what, three different, the four, four different streams. So we've got it through, okay, let's, let's make sure we go through this so people can kind of understand. This is how we're, we're generating. So the Amazon Affiliates link. Amazon Affiliates link. Which, by the way, people. It's in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's in the show notes. And if you haven't heard this for the millionth time, we even had a beautiful woman record a beautiful like commercial we're going to have. It's featured after the show. Uh, and it's going to say, visit our Amazon links. But she says it in such a more enticing way. I just... You know, Kevin and I just said, screw it. Uh, we weren't getting too much results. I, you, you, can't, um, you can't attract uh, bees with vinegar, you know? So, mm, good point, good point. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, you know, at this point, it's like, seriously, like, I mean, we're getting, like, scents, you know, at this point. So, please, yeah. folks, get on the Amazon link, share it with somebody, get it over there. We're even entertaining another option that my brother had actually suggested, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But anyway, Amazon Associates is one of them. So you visit the link down below. We get a certain percentage of all sales. It's no extra cost to you. There you go. There's my commercial. And here at the very end of the show. The next one is going to be uh, Kindle Direct Publishing. Kindle Direct as Publishing. We, yep. We've got uh, a few publications up through that, as well as just a few minor titles that are just unassociated with the actual bootstrap business name. ACX. We got ACX, so that's three, so that's all audiobook, and that actually is going to be available on three different platforms, but it comes through one income stream through ACX. Yep, and then, uh, Bab and then Babel Cube. Uh, did we miss Create Space? So Create Space, oh, yeah. and so then and then Babel Cube. So we're we're at five, and then five. add to that. I mean, we haven't seen any kind of income necessarily from our, our other affiliate offers, like through like WarriorPlus.com. So if you guys ever visit our uh, blog site at BootstrapBusinessmen.com. Uh, on blogs, we, we typically will will suggest some different products that you can use to help build your business. And this is not us just trying to reach into your pocket and take out your money and things like that. Because if we just want your money, we'll just come out and say, hey, why don't you give us some money? But we're not. What we're trying to do is offer you some solutions. Is the solution going to be perfect for you? Maybe not. But there are a good handful of you that are listening right now that it might work out for. Um, right. And speaking of uh, kind of transitioning perfectly into something like audiobook, uh, audiobook, Creation Exchange, ACX, we're in another two weeks going to be having my, one of my narrators, because I have many narrators, but one who actually has done my whole workout plan. Dude, he just, he just submitted the first 15 minutes for the three keys to greater health and happiness. That's, That's the dude. last title before all the compilations. That dude is like, on it. Dude, his name is uh, Morris R. Cravens II. Morris is going to share a bit about his narration experience. I don't know that he's had much beyond what he's done with me. But I'm telling you this right now, for the money, if you're a self-publisher and you're looking into do, getting a good narrator, Morris R. Cravens, it's, smelled like, it's spelled like Maurice, Maurice. M-A-U-R-I-C-E, Morris R. Cravens the second, dude, he's, he's awesome. I've not dealt right. with a narrator that has consistently good quality and his, his, he's efficient. He's like a, a machine, a machine. Like I'm literally like, I'm so excited at the pace he's going. I've been working feverishly on my next book, The Beginner's Workout Plan. Oh, so and, you can get Yeah, wow. because I, I want to give this guy more content because I can't keep up with him. Could you, ima could you imagine launching that in paperback, Kindle, and ACX all at the same time? That is exactly what I'm going to do. Actually, here's the sequence. And this is great that we're, we're getting to talk about this live on the air. we got about another five to seven. Oh, if we go over, who, who cares? Um <laughs> So here's, here's the sequence on how I'm going to do it. Okay, so I'm going to get all the content put together. I'm going to send it out to my beta readers, but this time they're just going to be strictly beta readers. So they're just going to give me input. I'm not bringing them in for reviewing at all, period. You know, I want to have beta readers and I'm going to have reviewers. And reviewers are going to be pretty much just people who are interested in reviewing it. That's that. Beta readers, I want to kind of get an inside input. As soon as all that stuff is all corrected that I have to where it's really tightened up to the beginner's home workout plan, I'm going to go ahead and publish it on CreateSpace, turn off the distribution channels, and then get it to where I can actually have the paperback ready to go. I'll get it on KDP, do a pre-sale. And at the same time, since it's already on paperback in CreateSpace, I can go into ACX, start that gig up, put it into my boy Morris's uh, 
um, you know, uh, hands and have him produce the content. And at that point, as soon as he gets it approved and I can kind of at least get a good understanding of when it's going to get launched, because that's the problem with ACX. Sometimes they'll have your stuff processed in two to three days, but sometimes they'll take one to two weeks. Right. So yeah. It really varies, but at least I can kind of get a good gauge. So that pre-sale will hopefully launch after it's done with the pre-sale. It'll launch perfectly to when the ACX is released. And as soon as that pre-sale is set, I'll also at the same time launch into create space. So simultaneously, all three products are going to come out at the same time, the paperback, the uh, the Kindle and the um, audio book. And I'm really I've, I've said this before, but I'm really entertaining, actually not even doing it through KDP Select and actually making it available all, all through Barnes and Noble, iTunes, all the other platforms, because I think, I that, think you should, because maybe that you might be missing some people. You know what I mean? This potential. Yeah. Here, here's here's why I, I haven't done it yet here's what you know because i have other ones that are perma free but i haven't had actually the you know the the very valuable my flagship books the actual workout plan books i haven't put those on other platforms just because it's fear uh i'm afraid that if i step out from amazon from the kdp select model here's the thing is people can check it out inside the library and if they flip through it it actually affects my ranking it'll actually increase you know it'll it'll push it up in ranking or at least maintain it. So like, let's say if I didn't get any sales in a particular day, if somebody still flips through my books, it'll maintain that rank pretty good. Mm, and okay. there are some days where I have crap days. Like for instance, today, like hasn't been the greatest days in the world, but the nice thing is people are reading through them. So it's maintaining some of my ranks. So um, that's what, that's my main fear. But I think at this point I need to stop being so fearful and just go ahead and pull the trigger because I think that there's a greater opportunity out there if I can make it available through Barnes and Noble and I can make it available through iTunes and, you know, rank be damned because if, if I can just sacrifice just a little bit of rank to make sure I reach more people, I think that's going to be the most important thing to me. Yeah. The crazy part about it is though, Amazon does, I mean, they do have the, the majority share of the marketplace. They do. They do. And yeah, it's, it's, it's so scary, you know, oh. uh, but you know, I think that, you know, this is me kind of talking out loud. I do know for sure I'm going for the simultaneous release on this, this next sure. one. It's, it's, I have so much plans and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to share some of those things. And if you're a self publisher and you have to be paying attention, or if you're considering it, this is going to definitely be uh, something you will want to pay attention to. And the other thing is too, uh, I think we mentioned in the last week's after show is, you know, talking a little bit about your business, and it, and before it used to go, it's really boring. After you've listened to Dewan, have you reconsidered your words? No, it's still pretty boring. It's still pretty boring, but could you be <laughs> able to share this in a way that you'd actually get somebody to where you can bring value to their life? Well, yeah, I mean, I do that every day. Absolutely, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't disagree with you, man. No. Um, of times yeah. I definitely want to interview you because uh, Kelly was genuinely interested. Uh, and I imagine if Kelly is very interested in it, there's going to be a small group of, you know, people that Kelly interacts with that will definitely tune in for an episode like that. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm game for it, man. And, you know, it is kind of one of those things, what he said. And it, some of it I was taking to heart. I really was. Um, and, you know, you, we can go back to when fuck it was first released <laughs> uh, you know i was like no 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 you know what i mean and there's that whole thing without putting yourself out there <sighs> gives a shit right after after it happened it was like huh, okay that wasn't so bad right you know what i mean there wasn't yeah. any there 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 wasn't any rejection that happened so you know and i think that's some of our biggest fears so when i was sitting there listening to him tonight i was like yep He's right. Yeah. And and I was like, Dale's always wanted to sit down and, and go a little more in depth with what I do and stuff. And uh, I was like, you know, I guess I guess it's time. You know, you just got to put yourself out there and whatever, man. You know, people. the worst thing they can say is no. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it, so, I'll tell you, it's, it's tough for everybody. Every yeah. single time that I go to launch a book, this happens usually in um, not only just when I'm in create space, but also when I'm in ACX and when I'm in um, even more importantly in KDP over in Kindle Direct Publishing, when I get ready to press that launch button, I always pause a second and I literally pause and I look at it and I go, am I ready for this? Because I tell you, rejection sucks, disapproval sucks. Um, but in the same instance, the thing that, you know, prevents me from not doing it is I think about the people that I could really make an impact on and I go, okay, screw it. If I get a one star review, they, you know, I'll learn from it and I'll just, just adjust course. 
Yeah. So, um, but in any event, man, we're getting down to the end of our hour, man. Uh, it's it's actually we're probably just a little over, which kind of happens yep. with our after show. We end up uh. about things and <laughs> it flows so easily, you know. It's it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, people, make sure that you're tuning in. Uh, you want to go over to um, show.bootstrapbusinessman.com. That's over at our Stitcher location. So uh, make sure you follow. And um, hey, if you're on any one of the podcasts from Stitcher to tune in to iTunes. Um, I believe there's a rating system on every single one of those, correct, Kevin? Absolutely, and that was another stream of income to potential. I was going to tell you, like Stitcher, SoundCloud, and then also oh. iTunes. So five working income streams and three potential. So there's yeah. eight income streams. Yeah. So yeah, please, uh, if you guys can, if you don't like it, you know, obviously put a one star on it. If you like it, you know, put a five star, four star, whatever you feel is most. Yeah. Favorite. We're not asking you to fluff our ego. What we want you to do is just take a moment and just just rate our podcast. Rest assured, you're going to see some improvements as time goes on. Like I said, we're going to be having uh, things on the podcast that are going to be the commercials. If you're ever catching us on live on YouTube, you won't see the commercials. You're essentially just seeing the content. And uh, we just we figured this is probably a unique way to share things. And of course, if you're not subscribed to us on YouTube, I really highly advise that you Do go over to see us on YouTube, Bootstrap Businessmen, turn the notifications on. Because here's the thing is, uh, we do our live recordings every Wednesday. That's just Kevin's and my time together. And we typically start right about five-ish. That's uh, Pacific Standard Time. That's eight-ish eight. uh, on Eastern Standard Time. So wherever you're at in the world, adjust to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and you'll, you'll be on the money. And here's here's the thing is it's eight ish. So for instance, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't start until about twenty after because we were having some technology issues uh, getting connected today. And of course, uh, D1 was kind of like a bonus today because it was one of those instances where I was like, "Hey, can we book you at the end of June?" He's like, "Why that far out?" <laughs> I was like, like, "Okay." I, I'm like, "Okay, well, when do you want to do it?" He's like, "When you soon as you got." He's like, "Let's just do it now." And he's like, "You guys can always just launch it later on." And I was like, money? I'm like, that's why there's good reason why I talk to Dewan because he comes up with great ideas. Because I was like, I'm, my brain's just like, you go on Wednesday, the end of June. It's empty. <laughs> and, and he's just like, no, I do it Actually, now. So, yeah, see, and people want to people wanna subscribe to that channel, man, because we got, I mean, Dewan kind of, uh, <laughs> he's going to be a tough one to follow, to be honest with you. Um, Barn burner. Yeah. Well, we got Clay coming back. Clay, yeah, bring, bring your A back. game, Clay. Bring your A game, dude. Yeah. So we got Clay coming back. Um, I mean, we got Christmas Abbott coming up. We've got. How, we've got how did you just gloss over Christmas Abbott? You bite your tongue, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> we've got a former from the 2002 national champion OSU Buckeyes, right? We've got a guest on oh, from there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to yeah. that. What about the IFBB Pro? Oh, oh, what, what was yep. her name? Gabby Sonhos. Oh, yeah. yes. Looking forward to yeah. that. Let me tell you, she she looks yeah. like she's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, she's got a unique business model, too. Unique business model, and uh, she's a tough cookie, man. She's a uh, no-holds-barred kind of chick. So Nice. That's, we, we got it's, some really good people coming to the table this yeah. month here. So uh, next week, though, it's going to start out. Uh, we're going to finish out this month with a big bang, Melina Shaw. Uh, yes. Keep in mind that every single one of our episodes, when it comes to some of our special guests, they're going to air on our podcast on Sundays, whereas our after shows, where it's Kevin and I jib jab, is going to air on Wednesdays. That's typically on the days that we're doing our live recording. So if you just happen to miss our after show, it's not a big deal. But definitely, always, you can come back, listen to it anytime you want to, share it with everybody. Uh, go to shop.bootstrapbusinessman.com if you want to buy a little bit of swag from us. We appreciate every little bit of support that you can give us. In the meantime, Kevin, close us out on this show. Yeah, and here's the thing, guys. Here, You might not like us. That's okay. But you might have a friend that could use a little motivation or an idea. So you got to share us. Share us on YouTube. Share us on Facebook. Whatever. That's the whole point, man, is you have to share, right? That's not even a commercial. That's just being honest we could say something that might touch somebody, but because of some jackass that doesn't share our stuff, well, don't be that jackass. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be a dick face. <laughs> don't be a dick face. Don't be a dick face. Yeah. All right. There's a t-shirt idea for you. All right. On behalf of bootstrap business, we really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have, Have a nice day. Please support the show by simply shopping at Amazon through the link in the show description. 
Every time you make a purchase through the provided link, a small percentage of sales goes back to support the show. There's no additional cost to you, and it greatly helps us out. Simply go to the link, bookmark it in your browser, and do your shopping on Amazon while you support the Bootstrap Businessman podcast. Thanks for tuning in to Bootstrap Businessman.